We've got Dr. Dakbo Thomas, who is an international law expert here with us to just go through the President's uh, speech at the UN General Assembly. Thank you for coming on this morning. Good morning. Well, you had expectations about the speech. After delivery, what do you think? Well, uh, maybe I must let you know that we have two versions of the speech in town. The, there is possibly the first speech which was released in advance, thinking that maybe that's what the president will read. The one that said was fake? Well, whether it was fake or not, but what I'm saying is that that must have been released in advance, thinking that that was what was going to read. Uh, but acting on impulse, possibly getting there and seeing that it was necessary for the president to discuss current issues, contemporary issues, particularly the region ones, you know, instead of the uh, mundane ones, which he earlier. That is if it is true. Anyway, if that was the original speech. So on getting there, possibly they prepared another one, which was the latest, which we are analyzing now. Right. And that one was able to capture the whole essence of um, the global issues, which the United Nations seems to be a bit docile and somehow active, you know, in reacting to. But be that be that as it may, we still have to see that um, when you look at the speech, it's a generalist. It, it adopts a generalist approach instead of a particularist approach. A generalist approach in the sense that so many issues were discussed. And this should not be. When you have a platform, when you have a forum to exhibit and discuss, things that are germane to your continent, to your region, or to your country. You pick only one. And then other uh, issues which you want to raise, maybe tangential, they may be subsidiary of the major ones. Unfortunately, uh, the president did not do that. So from what he, from what we have in the speech now, uh -huh. you do not even know which one is the substance which is the main, and that is, that is the whole essence of you addressing the United Nations. There must be a kernel, there must be a substantial issue that you want to raise. Do you want to raise the North Korean issue? Which you, he did. Which he did. Do you, want to, do you want to raise the asset recovery issue? Do you want to raise a uh, destabilization issue, that is the role or the possible uh, clandestine movements or clandestine activities of foreign partners? You know. In, in I mean, uh, increasing the wave of insurgency oh. in Nigeria. Do you want to talk about uh, child mortality? Do you want to talk about corruption? Do you want to so pick one, make it the substance of your speech, and then you make other subsidiary. So does but that now mean that he has yeah. discussed, which is a generalist approach that I, like I was saying, that's one aspect of the generalist approach. The second generalist approach, the second inkling or the second issue which makes it generalist is you have this platform to exhibit or to discuss mm -hmm. do you want to discuss africa as the substance of your issue or you want to discuss nigeria as the substance of your issue but from this one it appeared as though it was what nigeria as a substance because you mentioned uh how countries rallied to ensure that uh, they contribute to us tackling insurgency, Boko Haram. Yes. He talked about, remember, they also said about illicit flow of illicit funds. Yes. They needed assistance to make sure that also works. So those were no, specific when, issues. When, about when, you, when you look at the issues, you will see that maybe three or four are on Nigeria. About four or five are on other continents. So you, you, other, you would have preferred what? Larger ones that's, on that's Nigeria? The, that's the, one that, that's the way speeches are read at such global forums. That's the way speeches are done. You don't put everything together because you distract. You distract even the assembly because they won't even know which one is germane to your own interest. I mean, to your interest, national interest, regional interest, or the one that you are looking at, the global something. The, the global level of what importance is it to you. You can see um, Trump. Yeah. You can see Netanyahu. They were discussing issues that are germane to their own national interest. But what is germane to us? The asset recovery, which I feel should have been the substance, because that is exactly the agenda, the focus of the president's agenda, the campaign agenda. That is his focus, corruption. And then when you're talking of corruption, 
and then you are talking of asset recovery, and you, you can locate some of these loot, and then you have these countries, and there are no international institutional mechanisms to help you in the recovery of the loot, then you canvas, you canvas for some of the, for, for these mechanisms at this kind of forum so that this will help you. Because now, if you look at Switzerland, you look at the uh, US, you look at London, you look at Dubai, and then you want to approach this thing at bilateral level, it may be very difficult. So you have to approach it from the global or so you think he the multilateral level. Yes, we're in conversation with that, some of these countries, but we expect it to move a lot faster. No. no. How the, how the UN should help Nigeria or should help other weak countries in establishing, in ensuring that the um, underdevelopment of Africa is stemmed as a result. So, I mean, in a way to prevent people from looting, because the major problem we have in Africa is a situation where almost 60% of its resources have been diverted. They are being transferred. They are being stashed out. And then what kind of, what level, what degree, what level of development do you want to attain? And these nations uh -huh. are the beneficiaries of this loot. So the 60% which we should use in developing our countries here yeah. in, Af in I mean, Africa are being taken over there and they use. And then it's very difficult. Sometimes you find it difficult, extremely difficult to even recover what is, has been established as if, uh, I mean, has looted, uh, 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 has looted whatever, you know. In your country, they, they establish the. You have the facts. You have confronted them. You have done everything. Look at us now. We are still battling with some of the loot that we are about to have in Switzerland. I'm so I'm not so sure they have recovered everything. Now, if you do it at bilateral level, you are creating problems because number one, if people have been investing or taking the loot to Dubai before, now they are going to find some other havens, some other nations that are willing to attract this loot and then give them protection. So you think raising it there would have brought attention to that matter such that uh, it would galvanize international... Obviously, yes. Sure something so institutional mechanisms will be put in place and then prevent a situation where some other countries will now be attracting looters from, this, from some of these countries, particularly Nigeria. You understand? They will divert. They are going to divert. They will not go to some of these countries again where you have bilateral agreements with in, in terms of recovery. Now you know we have access to the assets of the Ziani in Dubai because as a result of the bilateral uh, agreement we have. But no, this piecemeal approach would not solve our problems. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this should have been the focus because this is what is important to us. This is what is causing underdevelopment in Africa. But you do realize... This is what is causing underdevelopment in Nigeria itself.